Grace be yours and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text is our gospel lesson for this morning. Dear friends in Christ, the announcement of an impending birth is the start of an introduction to joy in a family. Children are a heritage of the Lord. And when God blesses a husband and wife with the gift of a child, he is fulfilling one of his stated purposes for marriage. It is also true that God, according to his will and for his own purposes, at times gives the gift of life even after the sin of sex apart from marriage has taken place. Bearing a child out of wedlock used to be a cause for shame and disgrace. That was true in our culture. It was also true in Mary and Joseph's culture. When the virgin found out that she was going to have a baby, she knew that she would be the object of derision, of evil gossip, and would have all kinds of shame and disgrace heaped down upon her. This young man and this young woman had not yet come together as husband and wife. Thinking of all the things that Mary knew she would have to go through leads us to the question, then why in the world would she rejoice in the Lord? Why in the world would she give praise to her God? Well, the answer lies in the fact that Mary and later Joseph would, and by this time, Joseph would understand and know the real story behind her having a child. Upon hearing the news that she was going to be the mother of God, and even knowing and maybe already have experiencing that shame and that gossip from the unknowing world, Mary traveled to visit her relative Elizabeth, firm in her conviction and willingness to be the servant by which God would carry out his purposes. And Elizabeth, herself six months pregnant with John the Baptist, received Mary with understanding and confessed to Mary that she, Elizabeth, understood that she, Mary, was the mother of her Lord. And then Mary acknowledged that she would have this blessing from God and would carry out the Lord's purpose. And Mary praises her Lord for his undeserved love toward her. We know Mary's song of joy by another name, the Magnificat. This beautiful song is a song that the church from ancient times has used as part of its sacred liturgies. We use it in evening praise as part of that liturgy. And in the Magnificat, the Virgin Mother praises the Lord, her God, for his undeserved love for her. This undeserved love was this, that God chose for Mary an honor that he would give to no other woman. The Holy Spirit had come upon Mary just as the angel Gabriel had told her he would. The child growing in her 
would be called the Holy One, the Son of God. Even after Mary and Joseph, after a public ceremony, began living together as husband and wife, the Bible tells us that they did not have sexual relations until after Jesus was born. This additional information from the Holy Spirit in the sacred text is another reassurance to us that indeed Jesus is the Son, the eternal Son of God. He was born of a virgin. Mary knew, Mary recognized right away when Gabriel came to her that she was not worthy of such a blessing. In fact, she said that this whole thing deeply troubled her. You see, Mary had no sense of any immaculate conception of herself as being conceived and born without original sin. That's what the immaculate conception of Mary means. Mary recognized fully that she was a sinful human being and that because of her sin, she deserved nothing from God. And so she thanks God and praises God because she recognized this blessing of being the mother of his eternal son as something that was undeserved, something that she in no way participated in by any goodness of her own. It is also true that you and I uh, do not believe or confess that lie of the Immaculate Conception of Mary that some people are still spreading around in the church today. Mary was going to have a baby, and that baby had no human father. This is the teaching of the virgin birth. Virgin doesn't mean that Mary was a young woman. It means that she had never had sexual relations with a man. It means that that child in her was a miracle. The miracle of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ is an essential teaching of Orthodox Christian faith. If a person does not believe in the virgin birth, then they are not a Christian, and they cannot be a Christian so long as they believe that. The virgin birth of Jesus Christ proves that Jesus is true man, born of the Virgin Mary, and true God, conceived by the Holy Spirit. He is my Lord. And that's true because, as Mary said, nothing is impossible with God, even the virgin birth. Mary told Gabriel that she was willing to do whatever the Lord asked of her, even if that meant bearing the cross of people's misunderstanding, of people's lies, of people saying things about her that would cause her shame and disgrace because they didn't really believe or know what was going on. And rather than take any of the credit to herself, Mary sang this song of joy. My soul glorifies or magnifies. In Latin, magnifies is magnificat, from which we get the name. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. First of all, Mary sang this song of joy because she recognized that this child growing in her was her Savior from sin. And then she praised God because she recognized, as we do, that he is more than my Savior, but he is the Savior of the world. He says, Mary said that 
He is the Savior from those who go fear him from generation to generation. Mary remembered the mighty deeds that God had carried out with his powerful arm to save and deliver his people. And these mighty deeds he would now continue to carry on for the salvation of the world. But you and I are gathering together now today in our final preparation for the Feast of the Nativity of our Lord. It's something that we have looked forward to. Reminds me of children saying to their parents on Christmas Eve, Is it morning yet? Has he come yet? Is it, is it time? Isn't that the feeling of our hearts this morning after four weeks of preparation? Is it morning yet? Has he come yet? Can we gather yet to celebrate the birth of our Savior? And for us, the birth of the Savior is an event that touches more than my heart. It touches the world. As Christians around the world, fellow Christians around the world and Christian denominations of all types will gather together with us to welcome the Son of God and the Son of Mary, who comes in that mighty deed of the incarnation of the virgin birth to take care of people. Through her voice, through Mary's voice, God himself testifies to what this means. He has scattered the proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. This is God's mercy that all repentant sinners find and which those who remain arrogant in themselves miss. God is talking here about that humility that hunger for the forgiveness of sins and righteousness before God that we know that we cannot claim for ourselves. That we heard John the Baptist say and Jesus say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And in repentance, we approach that mighty arm and mighty act of God. Mary's song reminds us that we in our church body hold her in very high regard. We do hold Mary in high regard. She is the mother of God. Not just the mother of a human being, but also the mother of God. As Jesus in his two natures combines all of the qualities and attributes that he possesses in both of those natures. Mary rejoiced in that birth. And we rejoice in Mary as the means through which God brought his son into the world. That doesn't mean we worship Mary. It doesn't even mean that we simply adore Mary. It doesn't mean that we attribute to Mary cold qualities of redemption so that you have to really trust in her as much as in Jesus to be saved. We don't believe that Mary is better than we, so we have to go through her to get to God. We don't believe those lies that still are being spread that gossip that is being spread about Mary, even in the world today and in the church. But we do hold Mary in high regard. We do hold Mary as that instrument of God's grace. And that is why we fulfill what Mary sang in her song, because the Lord has done a favor to her, Many nations will call her blessed. 
And don't we call Mary blessed? How blessed was it to be chosen to be the vehicle through which the eternal God comes into the flesh? We confess that Mary is the mother of God by grace alone. And we understand the words of the Magnificat only to mean that she is praising God for his undeserved love. And that's why we still sing it. That's why the church has kept it as a part of our sacred liturgies. God has done you and me a favor. He has sent his son Jesus Christ to be holy for us and to die under God's punishment for sin for us. People call us blessed because we are. We are blessed to have that joy and that hope and that peace that comes in the birth of that baby in Bethlehem. We repeat Mary's song because the Lord has done great things for us. The Lord has extended his mighty arm to us. We were hungry and lowly and without God and without hope. And God called us by his gospel to be his own and to live under him in his kingdom. God has been mindful of our lowliest state and his grace has helped us. I'll suggest this morning that we can only suppose what was going on in Mary's mind for these nine months other than her complete willingness to be the Lord's servant as he had asked her to be. I'll suggest that Mary, as a young expectant mother, was looking ahead to the difficulties that come with a baby growing inside of you. But I'll also suggest that like every mother, she was looking forward to the birth of that child, as God had promised. And did you ever think of that? What mother ever really knows that that child will be born? Then and now, childbirth is a risky and dangerous thing. But Mary went through that nine months with the blessing and assurance of God that that child would be born, that that child would be her son and her savior. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. We may not know for sure what Mary's thoughts were about her Lord during this time, but we are sure of what the Lord's thoughts were toward Mary. That in spite of the ridicule and shame, in spite of the physical challenges and pains of childbirth, her God would be with her as she bore those crosses. God would be with her, and Mary would praise her Lord for his undeserved love, that she would be the mother of his eternal son born in the flesh. We do know that Mary looked forward to the birth of Jesus after the Annunciation from the angel Gabriel. And we look forward too, because we're part of the family. We're part of Mary's family. We are in that family of faith. And like her, we look forward in eager expectation to the birth of her son. And so the next time you sing the Magnificat, sing it with new appreciation, as Mary did, in order to magnify the Lord greatly. Amen.